All right. We need to find an architecture that lets us have a distributed and decentralized database that truly acts as a single database. And we've got to make sure that any writes that we make to the database, regardless of where we make them, we can't do writes in a centralized place and then replicate it out. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. I want this to be more distributed. I want people to be able to write to any database, write to any database, and then those writes, right, <laughs> get synced up while maintaining the order of the writes. Oh my god, this hurts. We can't have this situation. Every database, if we open it up, has to be identical. And the audit trail has to be identical. And so we're going to have to think about how do we get, even in this small environment of three databases, and, and new rights that need to be performed because it's the first time we're seeing these particular dependencies to be written, right? There's a lot of concurrency going on here. Concurrency means what? Out of order execution. We've got concurrency going on, and yet we've got to bring order to the out of order. Now. One way to solve this problem is to think about consensus. Consensus algorithms are designed to solve this type of problem, where we have a distributed and we want to maintain a decentralized database. But we want all of these databases to be exact duplicate copies of each other, like even in order. Right? This is where our consensus is going to come. The consensus algorithm we choose is going to give us the atomic rights, or in our case, atomic appends um, that we want. So let's, and when once we have our atomic appends, we are, now we have a really nice audit trail that we can use to validate any new appends that come into the system. I'll show you how we can do that. Well, let's start again with the idea that we're going to have three databases. All right, so let's just put them on the board. This is database one, and really, right, three copies of the same database. Okay, and let's have a real fun. Let's say this one's in Miami, this one's in London, and this one's in Sydney, right? We're, we're, we're far away from each other. So we know this. We know that the very first thing we're going to need to do is establish a peer to peer network where in the simplest case, we keep things simple until we can't. We can have every database have a connection to the other database. We can just keep this simple right now. Maybe we're only going to end up with five or six of these, so it's not a big deal. And so we could have created this peer-to-peer -peer network. Now, let's start small. Okay? We've got our CLI tool here, and our CLI tool says, Hey, uh, I want to bring in UUID version 1. Do you have a record of UUID version 1? And the DB says, nope, I've never seen that before. And so the CLI tooling says, great, here is the hash for that. And it wants to, let's say, write a record. Let's just post it like this for a second. It wants to write a new record for UUID. It wants to write it to this database. Now remember. If we write it to this database, then we also need to write it to this database in that order, whatever the next record number. Maybe this is now going to be record number 10. 10, previous hash, right, of record 9, UUID at version 1, and the hash for that. That record has to be written not just here as record 10, but it has to become record 10 here, has to become record 10 here. We need some way of writing this and then writing it here and writing it here and having consensus that we all agree that record 10 does represent this UUID with this data. This is what we need. Oh, this is what we need. How are we going to do this? OK. OK. There's a couple of consensus algorithms out there that we could leverage to do this. 
There's a bunch of them, but some of the more popular ones is proof of work, proof of stake, and proof of authority. Proof of stake and proof of authority are very, very similar. Very similar, we'll talk about that. But proof of work is very different. And proof of work is the consensus algorithm that you will find in Bitcoin. And up until just before the recording of this video, in Ethereum. Ethereum, now in the fall of 2022, switched from proof of work to proof of stake. But prior to the fall of 2022, these two major blockchains, Bitcoin and Ethereum, were using proof of work. We'll talk about why, but let's focus on proof of work to begin with. Remember the whole idea, the problem we're trying to solve is to create an atomic write across all three databases. In this case, let's say for record 10, and then to be able to audit that that is a proper record 10. So if I were to draw out maybe a small part of the current database, right? we know that we would have, say, record 8 with some previous hash, some package with its hash. right? We know that record 9, its previous hash points here for some package and some hash. And we know that this is duplicated exactly, if we're doing things right, across all of this, right? Again, previous hash, package hash. And again, the whole goal is that these are all exact copies that can be audited. Nine, previous hash, bop, for the same package hash. There it is. And now what happens is the user over here wants to add 10, which means that the previous hash has to match this for some new package and its hash. It wants to write this to the database. But that also means that this has to be written here. This has to be written here. The previous hash has to bind to from 10 to 9, from 10 to 9, from 10 to 9. So how can proof of work help us solve this problem? OK. Now, let's add something super interesting, too, when we go to look at this. Let's say that we're looking to write record 10 for some package A. But at the same time, somebody here wants to write record 10 for package B, and somebody here wants to write record 10 for package C. Let's say that we're just going to have this, right? We're going to write one record at a time. And right now, each of these databases have a client asking to write the next record, 10, but this one for package A, this one for package B, and this one for package C. Whew. How is this going to work? How are we going to do this? Only one of these, A, B, or C, can be the next record. OK. So this is how proof of work is going to happen. At the same time, let's not worry about how that happens just yet, but at the same time, all three databases are going to start a competition. And this competition is about solving a mathematical puzzle, but not a puzzle that can be solved with a polynomial function. It's a problem that can only be solved by brute force by iterating and iterating and iterating like a hundred million times with the idea that every one of these databases will spend at least 12 seconds the same 12 seconds trying in brute force to solve a puzzle. The first person, the first database, to solve that puzzle, the idea of the 12 seconds is that it should take at least 12 seconds. We don't want it to take less, right? Let's say we want it to 
to take about 12 for the consistency, for the pace, for the iteration. So the idea is maybe somewhere between 12 and 14 seconds, this problem should be solved. If it's not being solved within 12 to 14 seconds, then maybe the complexity is too high. If it's being solved too soon, complexity is not enough. But again, to keep things simple, these databases are competing with the idea that, it, that no solution should take, finding a solution in this brute force manner of iterations over and over again, 100 million times, should take at least 12 seconds. Now the idea is that one of these solves the problem first. And the problem they're going to solve will use this data as input into the, into the algorithm. So this data will be input. A way of thinking about the competition could be this. Given this data and another integer value that's selected randomly, this isn't how Ethereum or Bitcoin do it because this would be too simple. The algorithms have to be a little bit more complex, but it gives you a general idea. Given this data, and one more value, which is some random integer, take a hash. Take a hash. Maybe they use integer 0. Maybe they're using integer 1,000. Maybe they're using like max int. You take a hash. If the hash starts with, say, six leading zeros, you found a solution. So you take a hash, maybe you tried integer zero. You look at the first six values in the hash. They don't start with six leading zeros. You try a different integer. Maybe you just increment it by one. But you try. And you keep iterating, finding and using new integers. And you keep trying new integers. And you keep trying new integers until the hash you produce has six leading zeros. Now let's say that this computer found an integer when combined with this data that produced six leading zeros. It found a solution. So what does it do? It then takes this data with the integer and it sends it to both databases. It says, I have a solution for the next write. In which case, these two databases stop looking for a solution. They lost. Now, what happens is two audit checks can be performed. Each database looks at the data that was set, 10a and that integer, and then runs it through a function that generates the same hash and says, is the hash starting with six leading zeros? Oh, it is. Brilliant. OK, that's good. And then what should also be sent over and part of the data is the previous hash, right? So this data would also contain the previous hash and the record number that it's supposed to be. Everything that we store in the database, right? The full record. So 10, A, previous hash and hash, all of the data that you would need. And now what would happen is, is does that integer produce a hash of six leading zeros? Yay. OK, does the previous hash match the hash of nine? Yay. We could start doing all these checks. And then what happens here is since 10, the previous hash matches that record, pkg hash, now all these databases can write 10. They can write 10. Because they got a solution, the previous hashes match, and they're good. And then once they write that solution, they can go back and start trying to solve for the next record. They already have one that's pending. They have one that's pending. So now they can start looking for a solution. The first one, this won't be 10 anymore. This now will have to be what? 11. The previous hash will be different. And they start looking for an integer. And if they find one, they send it. And then it can be audit checked. Yep, 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 we found it. 11, it did have the same previous hash. And then we're going to write it. 
So in a proof of work scenario, the idea is we take the next record we want to write, we add an integer value to it, we use that to solve a puzzle like find me a hash with six leading zeros. Everybody's competing for the next record, doing the same thing, the next complete database int, next. And the first one that finds an integer that matches, they send it over the network. Everybody else stops doing when they see it. They can check the audit trail. Yep, we, I am expecting 10. Yes, the previous hash does match my nine. Okay, then this must be valid. And they can write it to the database. And then we start the next competition. So the pace at which we can write right, is determined by how long it takes to solve the puzzle. If we're allowing the puzzle to be solved too quickly, we could have a lot of sort of collisions going on. So Ethereum tends to run at that 12, when they were doing proof of work, 10 to 12, 12 to 14 second pace, which really minimized sort of collisions where multiple databases find a solution at the same time. We're not going to talk about that. We'll talk about that later when we're dealing in our Arden blockchain. I'm going to keep it simple here. But now you can see how proof of work can help us create a consensus model with atomic rights by trying to solve a puzzle at this sort of pace. Now, there's some inefficiencies here with proof of work, and that's kind of the next thing I want to talk about, because if we can implement a different sort of consensus protocol, like around proof of stake or proof of authority, then we can get a lot more efficiency in this process.